let's talk about the second factor cd r is clear now cd is called the displacement amplification factor displacement amplification factor as the name indicates that it is used to amplify the displacements of our structure so that they become inelastic displacement or more realistic displacements so displacement amplification factor uh, according to our seismic design philosophy now we design on design our structure on v design this level this level which is, which i am encircling now it is significantly lower than v elastic by a ratio equal to r so the idea is that now you apply uh, not v elastic but you apply reduced forces which is equal to v design when you apply v design to your elastic model it is going to give you the roof displacement which is equal to which is corresponding to this point b only right this point b so let me just highlight here on x axis that this is the displacement which which i am highlighting now this number which is given by your analysis procedure when you apply v design to your structure right reduced forces you apply you get this uh, you can say displacement on x axis this displacement is not corresponding to the actual displacement produced by the future design earthquake the future earthquake is going to give this path to your structure o b and then c it will not just stop at b force will uh, saturate and just go to point c but at the same time displacement will also increase right so which means that the displacement which you get from the elastic analysis using the reduced forces we design they will not be realistic displacement they will be simply elastic displacement the actual displacement produced by your uh, your structure under design earthquake is somewhere corresponding to this point c and if your structure is uh, uh, in a particular range sometimes this point a and point c are very close on on the x axis so which means that the displacements which you get from the analysis from reduced forces we design you have to amplify them again to bring them to some uh, point which is point c and in order to uh, bring those displacement from this point b to c we have to multiply the uh, the displacements which we get from the elastic analysis under reduced forces we have to multiply them with a displacement coefficient factor and that factor is cd displacement amplification factor or displacement uh, coefficient or magnification factor so we apply uh, this cd factor only to the displacements which are calculated as the result of seismic analysis so the summary is r factor is applied to the elastic forces and reduce them we apply those reduced forces to our computer model and calculate all the responses and displacements and story shear moment shear forces in beams and columns but to displacement responses alone we again multiply a cd factor to bring them from b point to c point because once the force once the capacity of the structure is achieved from b uh, the forces may not increase much but displacements will increase so the dis, the the for the displacements which we get from the elastic analysis and the reduced forces they need a further amplification on the right hand side to bring them approximately to the point c and that approximation is conducted through the application of this cd factor so cd factor is uh, an amplification obviously its its uh, value will be more than 1 it is uh, sometimes 2.5 3 3.5 for example or even more than that and in ubc 97 this amplification was 0.7 times r so it was not a separate factor it was simply 0.7 times the r value 
but now uh, in the IBC 2021 or IBC um, series of building codes, we have a separate displacement amplification factor called CD, and we apply that only to the displacement response. The forces uh, and everything they are reduced by R factor. And then the displacements alone are amplified again by the CD factor. So let me go back now to the table and see. For example, this is moment resisting frame. If R is 8 for a particular system, CD is 5.5, 5.5, right? So you reduce the forces by 8 times, apply those forces, calculate everything, and then amplify the displacements again by 5.5. Right, so that's how you require this CD factor in your all seismic analysis procedures. So again, I repeat that this R and CD factor, they are applied to all three seismic analysis procedures because they are using elastic computer model for this, this analysis purpose. Even in the analysis stage, we reduce forces by R factor. So no need to apply the V elastic and then divide all the responses by R factor. You just simply reduce the applied forces by R factor. So in the equivalent lateral force procedure, the R factor is already embedded in the formula to calculate the equivalent static forces. If you if you take out that R factor, whatever left in that formula is V elastic. And then you put R factor in the denominator and it reduces the forces from V elastic to V design already. So in the equivalent static force procedure, R is inherently there in the formula. In the uh, response spectrum analysis procedure, yes, uh, you can apply R factor while defining the load case you reduce the applied forces by, uh, by that R factor, define it as a scale factor. 1 over R can be defined as a scale factor. So all the forces will be reduced by R and then applied. Since uh, your model is elastic, so whether you first apply V elastic and reduce the response by R factor or you apply R factor directly to reduce the applied forces in the first place, both are the same things. Uh, because the model will be following F is equal to KU. So whether you apply F over R and get the response or you apply full F and then reduce the response by R, you will get the same result. But uh, in most of the cases, we can directly apply the R factor while defining the load case. Similarly, in the linear time history analysis, Use, you can use that scale factor option in ETABS or any other uh, structural analysis program and use 1 over R as the scale factor for that loading. So loading will be reduced automatically by R factor before application. So then you can get all the responses which are automatically reduced by R. And then alone on the displacement response you can apply this CD factor. There is a third parameter also third factor in that table and that is the over strength factor. When we apply R factor to all the total V elastic which means that we are assuming that all the elements in our structure will follow OBC line which means they will follow uh, a nonlinear line. Uh, a safe level of nonlinearity will be there in uh, all the elements. This is the assumption when we apply R to all the forces. Uh, but there can be certain critical elements in which we may not allow any level of nonlinearity at all. Some critical elements like transfer girders, for example, if there is a column coming from upper story and it is not continued in the lower story, so there will be a transfer girder and that transfer girder will be a critical element. So this particular element, this one will be transfer girder, right? So you may not allow any nonlinearity, no O, B, C line uh, for this particular critical element. 
similarly there can be certain critical columns in a particular building or some other elements also for which you may not allow any level of non linearity in all those cases code recommends an omega not factor and that omega factor is uh, the over strength factor the use of this factor is that you multiply the reduced forces let's say that you uh, you applied the v design reduced forces to your computer model and you get some bending moment in this transfer girder now you can use this uh, bending moment critical bending moment for example to design this particular transfer girder but this transfer girder is a critical element and you may not you may you may decide not to allow any level of non linearity in it in that case you will multiply that bending moment or whatever is the design action of that uh, particular element you multiply it with this amplification factor or over strength factor you multiply it with that omega not so actually you design that particular element on higher forces compared to all other elements so that when all other elements go into that non linear range obc this element follows oa this element remain elastic during the design earthquake so this is the use of this over strength factor that for all critical elements for which you decide not to allow any level of non linearity you amplify their design actions by that over strength factor so that they remain linear elastic during the design earthquake they do not go into that uh, non linearity like other some other elements right so this number is 2.3 or 2.5 or 3.5 in some cases so you can see here for this special moment resisting frame steel case if r is 8 cd is 5.5 over strength factor is 3 so the complete picture is this you calculate v elastic either it is from elf procedure or rsa procedure or linear time history analysis procedure you divide them with r to get the design level you calculate all the responses on these reduced applied forces for some response for some critical elements you amplify their design demands by this omega factor and for all the displacement responses you amplify their displacements uh, by 5.5 or this cd factor right so that's how using a linear model building code is approximately giving you this obc line this obc line your linear model cannot capture only a non linear model can capture but the real behavior code is trying to implicitly account for using these r factor and cd factor uh, so that you Uh, come to close you come close to the real behavior as much as possible so now let me go to the same discussion from which i started all this in step 5 before even selecting the seismic analysis procedure uh, you will use this table 12.2-1 to check whether your structural system is permitted or not permitted in that particular height range or in that particular seismic design category and at the same time you check uh, you pick the r value you pick the omega value and you pick the cd value in your uh, in your uh, for your particular structural system so uh, in a particular uh, finite element based program like etabs uh, these factors are automatically i think accounted r factor especially is automatically accounted Uh, in calculating the design base shear so we design when it is calculated in that formula it is automatically accounting the r factor it is already having the r value in the in the denominator right but the cd value and omega value you have to manually apply because there is a decision making involved in that uh, application 
for response spectrum analysis and linear time history analysis you can incorporate this r factor while making the load case for that particular analysis and then apply this omega to selected elements if you want and apply cg to all the displacement related responses after the analysis